In this episode of the Online Classroom, we're looking at the system interface, also known as the functional block diagrams. This is part of the preliminary system design topic, and we're going to apply that to our systems approach to a straightforward problem, keeping a lawn neat. The functional block diagram, also known as the system interface, translates your system boundary chart that we did in the previous episode of the Online Classroom into a system and subsystem diagram. This allows for easy identification of the different entities and the relationships between them in your system. So remember the system boundary chart from the previous episode. We have the internal, the external and the outside of the scope categories and within them some of the entities that might fit within those categories. For the purposes of the system interface we're really just concerned about the internal and the external categories. When we apply that to the system interface, we have the lawn cutting system as a series of subsystems. We have the cutting system, the locomotion subsystem, the power subsystem, the chassis, the controls, and the safety subsystems. This is where our system boundary is defined. Each of these subsystems could be drilled down further. For example, the cutting system is made up of a number of components. To define that this is all what we're considering within our system, we draw a dotted line around it called this the system boundary. The next step is to the next step is to identify the external entities that will affect what happens inside the system boundary. So here I've identified the user, the grass, the cuttings, the power, emissions, user input, and feedback response. Note that this is slightly different to the list displayed in the external category, but this as a result of trying to identify how the interactions happen. So the model boundary chart was a good way to brainstorm ideas. And when you start looking at the interface of your subsystems, you can clarify them a bit further. The next step is to identify the relationships between the inputs and the subsystems. So here I've identified that there's some interaction between each of these things indicated by the green arrows. If we extend this further, we can start looking at the interactions within the subsystem. So here I've got the locomotion system having an effect on the chassis. The chassis has an effect on both the power and the cutting systems. The power system has an effect on the cutting system. The controls have an effect on the power system. And the safety overrides things in the control and the power system. These lines indicate the relationships between the subsystems. The next step is to identify what those relationships are or how they could be measured. So where appropriate, there's a unit but usually there's just an indication of what the interaction is. So for example, the grass in volume or kilograms is an input to the cutting system, and as a result, the cutting system will output some volume or kilogram of cuttings. Likewise, fuel is an input to the power system, and the power system will emit either exhaust or noise. You also need to identify the relationships inside the subsystem, so, for example, the locomotion system has some sort of force on the chassis. The control system has some sort of instruction to the power system. At the moment, it's a bit difficult to apply units to these relationships because we're not exactly sure how the system is going to look, but there is a relationship there and that's been identified. Here we present the final system interface for the lawn cutting system. You can see it becomes quite visually busy very quickly, so it's best to keep things simple before they get out of control. One interesting extension you might look at in your exam or in your individual research paper is how these relationships could be changed and you would end up with a completely different design. So for example, if we were to introduce a relationship between the power system and the locomotion system, you might then have a mower that had some sort of locomotion from the power system. Likewise, you could get rid of the user input into the locomotion system and that could be done through controls. Here we have a system where the control system directly influences the locomotion system, which in turn takes the user input out of the locomotion system completely. The important thing to highlight here is that the relationships define how your system is going to operate. By changing these relationships, you change the way and intention of your design. To sum up a few key ideas, the functional block diagram defines the layout and interactions between the external inputs and the subsystems within your system boundary. And the functional block diagram shows the intent of the design. 
That's all for this episode of the Online Classroom. Please make sure to check out the reading on the public website and the self-tests on Waddle. See you next time.